Welcome everybody to an art journal tutorial. In this one, I'm going to create my color layer using ink temps blocks and gel prints. This is part of the Use Those Gel Prints and Collage Papers series. So I'm going to break this 7x10 Canson Mixed Media page by doing some stamping with black archival paint. This is the number stamp from Chow Bella and it's a great general stamp. This one and all the stamps that I use can be purchased at Vinnie's Napkins. There's a link and a coupon code in the description box if you're interested. So I'm just stamping and I'm not, of course, I'm not getting great stamping. I seem to be stamping challenged. And so I remember that some of my subscribers have told me that if you put a, like a mouse pad underneath, that you can get a better stamp. Now I'm not overly concerned about the quality of the stamping that I want here because this is just going to be pattern and interest in the background. I'm layering up the stamps and this is a great way of using those favorite parts from this stamp collection and that stamp collection. So that one was numbers. This one comes from Sacred Geometry and I'm overlapping the stamping here. Now I know that some of this is going to show and some of it isn't and I'm okay with that because the purpose is just to add those little bits of interest here and there. My page has been gessoed ahead of time and I prefer that I find it helps the colors blend. So this one is from music. I will find the exact name and I will put it in the description box below and in the Ninny's napkin section. But here I just love the treble clef here and I'm just adding it into the stamping that I've already done. So I'm going to start the color layer using my ink tense blocks. Now ink tense blocks are ink, not watercolor, even though they are water soluble like watercolor pencils or crayons. They are permanent once they're fully activated and fully dry, which is why I like them. Now I've swatched out the colors so I can easily see and pick what colors I like. Now you can also get ink tents in pencils and I have those, but I prefer the blocks. And this is so super easy. You basically just scribble down the colors that you want. The colors are intense, hence the name ink tints. They're bright, they're bold, but they do give a matte finish, which is somewhat different than my Liquitex Basics Acrylics. So I'm just putting the colors down here and I'm using a winning color combination, yellows, orange, reds, and kind of teal color. Now some of these colors, if they're close to each other on the color wheel, when you mix them together, you're going to get, <coughs> excuse me, a nice color. I want to avoid putting the teal next to maybe the red or the orange because that might give you a brown or muddy color that you may not like. So I'm going color by color and activating it with water and it dissolves and activates really quickly as you can see. And I'm doing a little bit of blending with the water. Now when I started this I was planning on leaving some white space. As you will see I basically end up covering the entire page and that's okay. I end up adding white in later for the contrast. Then I turn the page and I'm at doing some drippage. Now these ink tense blocks are amazing and I have a series of videos where I show different ways of using them in art journaling and mixed media. And I will link to that series. So if this is a product that you are interested in 
know that it is so usable in mixed media. So I showed on the color wheel that the teal, my selection of teal is because it's across the color wheel from the color, other colors, the yellows and the re reds and the oranges. And I, that's going to give a lot of energy to my page. Now I'm careful here when I'm activating because I do not want to get mud, but if you do get mud, you can grab a baby wipe and just kind of dab it up and then reapply color. Worst case scenario, you can put a coat of gesso on it and then take it back to neutral and then put more color. If you want a more faded look, you can add more water. If you want brighter, you're going to add more pigment, which I will be doing later on. So the ink dance blocks are great if you are traveling and you want a color medium because you don't have a whole bunch of tubes. It's very compact. It's all in one tray. I've had these for over five, six years and they last a long time. So once I've got the base color down, now this is not, it's kind of the ugly stage right now, but every page goes through that ugly stage. Right now I'm just giving this a good dry. Then I went through my gel prints, the same colors that were there, and I'm ripping up some of the gel prints and layering it on top of where that color is. Now this is gives texture, it adds pattern, and it's another way of using those gel prints to lay down color. I don't like straight edges, so for the most part I am ripping these, much the same as the rip a strip technique where you break the blank page, but this one is more a middle of the process technique. You can cut these to certain shapes and put them on top. Pretty much anything goes. It's a personal preference. So I'm playing with this, breaking up the colors that are there, just adding. And the long and short of it is you're just additioning each part. Try it here, try it there. What do you like? If, that's, if you like it, that's where it's, it ends up. So now that it's all, I've kind of decided where everything's going, I'm going to glue this down with my fluid matte medium. Now, the ink tense blocks are permanent, but only if they have been fully activated in the, you know, so I'm being a little bit careful here when I'm gluing it down and adding wet medium, but really, for the most part, it did not reactivate at all. What I don't want to do is really scrub hard because sometimes it takes, it needs to dry completely for it to, to be fully permanent. Now this is the first time I'm using this two-step color development using a color medium and then the gel prints. I saw Susanna Rose Art doing this and I think I'm going to do more with this because I'm liking how this turned out but I think I've barely scratched the surface of it. So. And with any new technique, you need to do it several times before you get comfortable with it. So I have created a playlist, use those gel prints collage papers, and I will be putting in videos where I am using those things to, 
on a page to show you how to use those gel prints and collage papers that are in your stash. We know we all have them. They, they tend to take over our studio, but we need to use them. Now, after I glue all this down, I give the entire page a coat of the matte medium. I did that because I'm going to add other things, the focal image to it, and I didn't want anything to reactivate. So putting a coat of that or workable fixative, just, you know, ensures that you're not going to run into trouble later on because it's very disheartening when you put all this work in and then it suddenly smears or reactivates and ruins what you've had. Every time I layer up another piece of collage paper, it's adding texture to the page as well. Now at this stage, this was my goal, was to do this technique. I did not have an idea of what the focal point was. I didn't even know which way the page was really going to go. Once it's completely dry, I cut off the excess, and I've given that a coat of the matte medium. So it is all sealed. It's, it's, it has all become a non-porous surface. So the ink tense is not going to reactivate. But I come in now, and I decide, you know, I want to brighten some of these areas. So I'm adding more ink tents and just building up the colors. And all you have to do is just scribble on again and reactivate. I also got rid of some of the orange on there and turned it more red. I took the red on top of it because I found that I didn't like the orange as much and I want it the brighter red color. So you can build up the intensity of your color this way. And now that I have those collage papers in there, that's guiding the next step. So I can add the ink tense blocks right on top of the collage papers if I wish. And you can see some of that stamping that I had done in that very first layer when I broke the page is peeking through. And I like those little bits. Now I'm going to add more interest to the page. I'm using this dot stamp. I believe it's from Stamp Pendus and Black Archival Ink. I'm, the black is adding some contrast to the page. And by covering it over top of the gel prints and where the ink tints is, it just helps meld and blend everything that's on that layer together. This is the Onion Blossom Stencil, the six inch size. And I like using this little burst of kind of explosion of colors. It's a nice small scale. And I'm going to stencil this over just like I did the stamping. And I'm using white this time. 
because I really want this to be a lighter page. The colors are very, very bright and vibrant. And again, I'm going in different places over top of the, you know, two different colors, off over top the gel prints and the ink tense blocks. And that just marries everything together. This part, this stencil, it, was, it wasn't quite as opaque as I want, so I line it up and I just add more paint. So I'm loving the background and I think I'm done at this stage. So I need to start thinking what kind of focal image. Now with all these bright colors in there, that makes it somewhat difficult. And often when I do that, I go to a black and white free printable. This is Magnolia Blossom and it's quite big, but I like how the white comes out and then I had this hummingbird stamp that I had stamped thinking I was going to use it on a different page didn't use it it's just one of those little stamps that I got years ago so I'm combining that printable with the stamp onto the background be sure to keep watching because I'm going to show you how I take that white printable the magnolia blossom and add a couple different things to it that really make it work. So I'm shading or edging the page with black acrylic paint and my angle brush. And as you can see, because the ink tense blocks are permanent when completely activated and dry, as I put this on, I'm not reactivating any of the ink tense block. If that was watercolor, you'd have a different effect. And I couldn't use this technique. So I also grabbed a sentiment from my It's About Time sentiment pack, and now I'm just going to glue everything down with my fluid matte medium. I did get a little bit of the ink tense block there that had reactivated, but you can easily wipe it off with a baby wipe or I just did it with my finger. But I don't want these focal image and sentiments to be colored with it. So I need to be mindful that that could happen. If you use watercolors or something else that's not permanent, you just have to be mindful and change what you do and how you do it. Once everything's dry, I'm cutting off the excess. And I like how the white focal image does, works. But I want to shade around it just to make it stand out, give it some shadows. And this is, I'm hoping to set it off from the colorful background. And at this point, that was all I really planned on doing but I do add a couple more steps, which I absolutely love and will now do on purpose to create a similar effect on future pages. So whenever you try something new and, you, and it works, embrace it. I think this background is very colorful, very vibrant, very tropical feeling.
And I do go over the shading again. I'm not sure all of it was caught on camera. If you want to learn how to do this kind of shading, just search in my YouTube channel for either shading or floating acrylic. So then I decide I'm going to add a little more shading to the actual printable. Now remember, I've coated this when I glued it down. It has a layer of gel or flat or fluid matte medium on it. So it's become a non-porous surface. So it's not going to soak into the paper. And that's why I can paint on top. So I'm going to shade all these petals and the leaves with the black. Kind of make it more grayscale a little bit, not so quite pristine white. So it doesn't really look like I've just glued something down. I could have painted this out if I wanted to. So options there and there's no right or wrong, just different ways of doing it. I love magnolias, so there are certain things, hummingbirds, dragonflies, butterflies, magnolias, that, you know, just my happy place when I create. The stem of the magnolia, I actually elongated. It was shorter. So if you go back in the video, you'll see that it's just kind of floating. I just put a coat, some white paint down there and just made it look like and extended the branch to fit my composition. Now I'm going to shade around the sentiment as well. And that's going to help it stand up from the background. And it's important to do that because this background is very colorful and there's lots of pattern there. And you want the focal image, the picture, the sentiment to be the standout item. Supported by your background. Just want to add more depth of color to the shading around the, uh, the edge of the page. I want to add more contrast. And then I want to shade around the hummingbird as well. After giving it a quick dry, I grab my Posca pan and I'm just going to trace over the hummingbird. This was not a well stamped stamped image. I just wanted to make it a little darker to make it stand out a little bit more. And then I'm going around the sentiment as well.
in real life you can see you can see those collage papers you can see the texture that's there I wanted to add a little stamping to the background so I grabbed my elegant script from darkroom door and I'm stamping it on the background and then I decide hey you know what would how would it look if I stamp a little bit on the flower and I'm loving it so I add even more so between shading it with and getting that gray tone on there and then the stamping I absolutely love that effect so even though it's a white printable you can add interest into it and change it up to make it really yours and you know it's me so I gotta add some bling so I've got my watered down gold acrylic paint and I'm splattering with the gold over the entire page and there we have the finished page I hope you love it as much as I do I hope you give this technique a try there are several techniques in here give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel click on the bell so you get notified of upcoming videos and until next time go get creative